Hi, I'm Maham Tariq from Skillcurb and in this lab we'll learn how to run and deploy our first Azure function. So let's get started. After you log into your Azure portal, search for Function App. Function App is basically a logical container where you'll run and deploy your functions. So just click on Create, select a subscription and a resource group, select a unique name for your Function App. You need to select your runtime stack. We'll be selecting .NET here. A default version and region will be selected automatically. We'll leave the operating system to Windows and click on Next. We'll leave most of the settings at default and we, had, we don't have much to change here. I've disabled the application insights here, but we can always change that later. Just review all the settings you decided on and then click on Create. The deployment will not take more than a minute. Once it's deployed, go to the resource. Here, select functions so that we can create a new function here. Now, in the development environment, you can select any code editor, Visual Studio or develop in the portal. I'll just select develop in the portal. And then you have multiple templates to choose from. I'll just select HTTP trigger. The function name only needs to be unique inside a function app. So I'll just leave it to HTTP trigger one. Then just click on create. After the function is created, go to the code and test environment. Here you can see all the code of this function. I've disabled the app inside so we don't have anything to see in the logs, but we'll change that later on in the video. So the first line of this function is just to maintain a log. Then this next chunk of code is taking a parameter as an input and checking for a request. The last few lines are for the response message. You'll get a different response based on the parameter you pass. Now let's run and test this code. Here I leave everything else at default, but then I can change the name here in the body. I'll just change the Azure name to skill curve and click on run. It's showing this message because I have passed skill curve in the name parameter. Another way that we can run this function is through get function URL. We can't see application insights right now because they're, they're turned off. I'll just click on get function URL and copy this URL from here. Now I'll open a new window and paste this URL and click enter. Here I can see the message. This HTTP triggered function executed successfully. Now it has not shown me the message I saw previously because I have not passed any name in the name parameter. But before I can move on to doing that, let me just first turn on the application insights so I can see whatever is happening. I'll just go back to the function, go into the application insights settings and just turn it on. It's that simple. Now I'll go back to the function and now I'll be able to see all of the logs. Functions let you use keys to make it harder to access your HTTP function endpoints during development. Unless the HTTP access level on HTTP triggered function is set to anonymous, requests must include an API access key in the request and that is what this code parameter does in this URL. So if I change even a single letter in this URL, this won't work. So we just had to test that. Now I'll try passing a name in the URL. So for that I'll write and name equals to skill curve and see what happens. Now the function has returned us the other message because we have passed a name in the name parameter and that's all that we had to learn in this lab. Now that we're done performing this lab, I'll delete all of the resources that I created only for the purpose of this lab since I no longer need them. Thank you for watching. See you in the next lab.